Burmese boxing or Lei Wei is a form of martial arts that can be traced back about a thousand years. It is a popular sport in Myanmar, but is not well known on the global sports stage. Closing the country and limiting contact with other nations has limited exposure to Burmese boxing. It has been pretty much a hidden martial art. On the outskirts of Yangon, a group of around 20 young Burmese boys wrap their hands tightly in white cloth, preparing for their daily boxing routine. These boys, ranging in age from 12 to 20, are the youth boxers at the Young White Blood Club boxing camp. Concrete roads, car tires and sandbags hung from trees are the places and equipment used to sharpen their skills as there's no gym or modern equipment available. Here, there are only a trainer with years of experience in the industry and young friends who have chosen to follow the same path. They have to improve their postures and techniques so that they may, one day, compete in professional boxing arenas across the country. These children, many of whom come from poor families, have left their hometowns for long periods and have to live under the strict discipline of athletes. The type of boxing being practiced is known to the Burmese as Lei Wei, an ancient martial art. It was used by the Burmese in times past to defend themselves against neighboring countries. They used their fists, elbows and knees as weapons, while keeping a keen eye focused on their opponent. They practiced strong but nimble kicks to keep their opponents from evading them, and used their strongest weapon, their head. A unique move in Lei Wei is the headbutt, which requires flexibility, strength and precision. This sets it apart from Muay Thai or Thai boxing. Foreigners may know Muay Thai for its use of eight parts of the body. Burmese boxing, however, is the martial art of nine. Muay Thai today utilizes the two fists, two elbows, two knees and two feet as weapons. Burmese boxing, however, adds the head as a weapon, which is banned by current Muay Thai rules. Burmese boxing is a very violent and hazardous sport due to the use of the head as a weapon, which can result in severe brain damage. Their determination is the energy flowing through their veins, somewhat like the name of the Young White Blood Club. How long does, do they have to train to be a fighter? Although Burmese boxing is well known among Myanmar locals, it hasn't gained much in popularity on the international stage. Myanmar was a closed country for a long time, so Burmese boxing has been just an ancient sport in which no one invested as a serious business. For a small boxing camp like the Young White Blood Club, participating in various festivals is crucial. Not only does it give the youngsters a chance to pursue their dreams, but winning prize money is also a necessity for sustaining the camp and its members. Today, 15-year-old Mint is the camp's greatest hope. He's been passionate about boxing since childhood. This young man who left his hometown has come a long way to train as a professional boxer and has been at this boxing camp for three years now. In preparation for an upcoming match, Mint is practicing a quick punch alongside the other kids. This move is the special technique he plans to use in tomorrow's match. <laughs> Oh, 
For the youngsters here, their dream is to become a well-known boxer and to have a better life. For the teacher, his ultimate goal is to help them achieve those dreams. The upcoming small competition could either pave the way for them to realize their aspirations or shatter them completely. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. In Pantanal, which is around 200 kilometers from Yangon, there's an annual Karen festival, which often incorporates a boxing ring. Ye Yin Aung, a skilled boxing teacher, carefully wraps mint hands and ankles at the side of the ring. Friends from the boxing camp come to provide support. After a long day of training, it's Mint's big chance to bring victory back to his teachers and everyone at the camp. Burmese boxing has not only been used against enemies, but also as a martial art for entertainment at festivals and other events. Boxing is a sport for people of all statuses in Myanmar. It is attracting audiences ranging from the ruling class to the general public to watch and cheer. After nearly a millennium, this popularity has not been diminished by modernization and the internet in Myanmar. People are still enjoying this ancient martial art. Local men and women gather around a small boxing stadium located in an open field, eagerly awaiting the bouts. Children and adults are in colorful winter clothes. Ladies dress in bright colors and wear tanaka, a yellowish-white cosmetic paste made from ground bark a popular tradition. Ticketed spectators sit at the edge of the ring while those without tickets stand or sit on the bamboo fences surrounding the stadium. A xylophone, cymbal and gong band play local songs during the competition. Historically, Leiwei is more of a tradition among the Karen and Mon people than any other ethnic group. That's why the Burmese ethnic Karen in Pantano are looking forward to tonight. <laughs> the band increases the volume and the tempo of the music to increase the air of anticipation. Ye Yin Aung prepares Mint for battle by applying boxing oil and massaging his muscles. He then blesses his student before entering the ring. Today, Mint will be facing his childhood friend, Thor, who is of the same age. When the referee gives the sign to start the fight, both competitors begin to kick and punch at each other. In ancient times, Burmese boxing had no referee, rounds or scoring. The only way to win was by knocking out your opponent or injuring them so badly that they could not continue. If neither fighter was knocked out, the match was considered a draw, or sometimes fighters could rest and fight again. This could last for several days. This rule was considered controversial in the world of sports. Currently, however, this tough rule has been updated to be more modern and safer. At the ring today, a referee is present to oversee the competition, which consists of three rounds, each lasting three minutes. Nonetheless, the sport maintains its traditional Burmese boxing identity, requiring the winning contestant to knock their opponent unconscious. During the fight, both of them struggle to find the right time to kick and punch each other. Today, Mint's opponent has an advantage in that he's taller, so he can get closer and use his knees more easily. Mint has to rely on a counter-attack by delivering a powerful punch to the opponent's stomach. This is a technique he practices every day at the boxing camp to knock down his opponent. During the match, the villagers look up at the battle with joy. Many of them take out their mobile phones to record the match, 
a very modern addition to the event. It is entertainment for everyone here tonight. Burmese boxing has such rules because it is believed that they will make the competitors fight until the last second and will make the bouts fierce and intense. As a result, most of the time it ends in a draw, just like this time after three rounds. No one has been knocked out yet, even though Mint's opponent had some advantages. The rules are another reason why Burmese boxing still only gets attention among the people of Myanmar when compared to Muay Thai or other types of boxing that often have winners and losers. Mint didn't return home as a loser today, but the draw left him feeling like he hadn't won either. These youngsters don't play sports just as a hobby in their leisure time. For them, it's the path of dreams, aspiring to grow up and become professional boxers, turning their passion into a career. In the gym, a man with a strong, muscular body adorned with tattoos all over is practicing boxing with great concentration. This is Tutu, a 29-year-old middleweight Burmese boxer who has gained popularity both in Myanmar and among foreigners. Just like the kids at the Young White Blood Club, Tutu began his journey as a professional boxer at a young age. Growing up in poverty, he turned his passion into a career, and for over 20 years he has been following this path with dedication. <laughs> Tutu grew up during a period when the rules of Burmese boxing underwent modernization and gained some global recognition. Despite having a long history going back a thousand years, Burmese boxing only caught the world's attention about 71 years ago, when Kiaban Yen participated in the Summer Olympics in 1952. He played a pivotal role in modernizing Burmese boxing rules, introducing elements like round counting and in-ring referees. Deciding the winner in Burmese boxing is now done in two ways, either by knocking the opponent down until they cannot continue to fight, which was the method used in the past, or by points. The modern rules were officially implemented about 20 years ago, and Tutu has experienced every change. Regardless of the rules, however, Burmese boxing remains unique for him, due to its distinct feature of allowing headbutting in the fights. <laughs> During Tutu's career, Burmese boxing has become an attractive investment opportunity for businessmen. The boxing shorts the Tutu wears are produced by the World Leiway Championship, the pioneering company that brought Burmese boxing to a global audience through broadcasting. We met Gerald Ng, CEO of World Leiway Championship, or WLC, a Singaporean who was convinced to introduce Burmese boxing to the global sports market. The WLC revolutionized Burmese boxing by adopting a point-based system for matches, avoiding the frequent draws under the old rules. This change not only adds excitement to the bouts, but also made them more appealing to the global sports market. 
In 1994, they invented two sets of rules, and we use World Leeway rules for World Leeway Championship, um, which is the lesser of the two rules that were created back then. Mm -hmm. um, this is safer for the fighters, and it also produces a more compact, um, a more streamlined and faster pace of entertainment society where so much content is readily available. We want to make sure that we produce the best, most exciting fight um, in a short period of time. The WLC broadcasts Burmese boxing on 22 TV channels in Myanmar and around the world, including sports channels like UFC and OCC, which live streams boxing on mobile devices. The advent of mobile sports broadcasting has significantly transformed viewer behavior globally making sports content more sought after. The WLC recognizes that Burmese boxing is well positioned to meet audience demand. There's a steady demand for good uh, martial art content. And what World Level Championship provides is a different form of content um, where you get both the excellence of combat sports, but you also get to go on a kind of cultural experience where you understand a little bit more about a new country. The WLC has attracted more than 250 boxers from Myanmar and around the world to its agency. Tutu's remarkable skills caught the attention of the WLC as well, propelling him to becoming the organization's top fighter. His talent and dedication have led him to compete against boxers from around the world. Today, he devotes himself to intensive training, perfecting his punches, kneeing and headbutts in preparation for his upcoming fight against a boxer from Uzbekistan. Yeah, Tutu is the middleweight champion of World Leeway Championship right now. Um, he is the number one pound for pound fighter in Myanmar at the moment. Mm -hmm. He's the biggest star. He's that's probably the biggest star in Leeway in the past 30, 40 years. Who defeated him years ago? On the day of the match, the boxing ring was illuminated by colorful spotlights while a large and eager crowd of Burmese spectators gathered around the ring. The passion for Burmese boxing in Pantanor is no different from that of the people here. But what sets this event apart is the modernity that the WLC brings to the boxing fans and the implementation of rules with referees scoring. During the five rounds of the match, both fighters attack with determination, showcasing their well-honed tactics. As the rounds progressed, the score remained even and the referee had to call upon the three committee members to determine the winner. Finally, the referee declared his opponent the winner. Tutu didn't win this rematch. The judging system introduced by the WLC has made Burmese boxing even more captivating. This system, however, remains controversial among Burmese boxers and fans, as some believe it has led to a loss of the sport's traditional identity. For boxers like Tutu and the aspiring youngsters at the Young White Blood Club, boxing represents more than just cultural preservation. It serves as an opportunity to showcase their skills to a vast audience, enabling them to gain recognition and acceptance, leading to personal growth. Their journey from the village ring onto the world stage is the pursuit of their dreams and the prospect of having a better life. Uh, <laughs> Myanmar's ancient kingdoms have evolved over time. 
While the desire to preserve tradition is strong, adaptation is necessary to gain wider acceptance. For over a thousand years, Leiwei has been the embodiment of art, sport, competition, pride, entertainment, and careers for Myanmar's men. Now, it's time to embrace change and venture into the business world. The objective is not merely to defeat opponents, but also to win the hearts of the audience.